Hello everyone, welcome to episode 8 of Scala Projects from Scratch, the series in which we, we follow a process of developing a, a Scala project from the beginning, uh, from the project setup uh, to a final step where it's fully functional, like functioning and, uh, and usable. In this episode, I think we will be starting to get closer to the end. Uh, I will start making changes that will bring us to the final state, more that than changing the architecture or designing more components. Uh, I think once we have that end-to-end -end, uh, skeleton, for example, if we add a, a client interface, uh, like an actual like front-end uh, for the, for the, the client, uh, I think we'll have a clear direction of where we want to go with this and uh, we might actually see the end of the tunnel. I don't want this to be like a 20 episode series, I think. Uh, it's, we should be wrapping up in like three or four episodes. So I think uh, we'll just start getting there. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, building the client frontend would be a nice idea. Uh, so we'll have something like a command line client, uh, which I think was the, the, the goal in the, be in the beginning of the series already. Um, so we're gonna start doing that. That probably finish as well because it's not gonna be very complex work. Uh, and then we're gonna, uh, if we have time left, uh, we're gonna try to migrate all the existing tests to Weaver. Uh, because of, as we've seen in the previous episodes, it gives us some things that uh, that Amunit didn't. Uh, and yeah, th that, that should be it. Uh, if we have more time after all of this, which I don't think we will, uh, we, we can add some more stuff, more ideas. But for now, uh, I would just settle for this. Uh, and yeah, uh, we will start with uh, going through the pull requests from Scott Stewart, as, as always, uh, when we are on the main branch. Uh, we always go through this, uh, but before we do that, I just wanted to mention that a couple of people have already uh, made their own implementations of this project. Have, they have followed uh, the series, so if you are one of these people, uh, I encourage you to just send me a pull request to add yourself to this list, or just leave a, a link in the comments, so I'll uh, copy paste it myself. Uh, but yeah, I think it would be great to, to see uh, the, uh, the, the community of this project uh, to see how large it is and uh, yeah, maybe compare our solutions. Uh, although I think most of them will be identical, uh, just following what I do here. Uh, but yeah, with that, with that in mind, uh, let's get to the pull requests. Uh, so I'll start from the from the top. Actually, let's just make sure that there are no like duplicates. Uh, I think Scala Stewart doesn't actually keep duplicates open anymore, so we can probably just just uh, go through them in any order. Uh, so we have cat effect, mm, we have logback, um, uh, weaver, sbtt polcat, tap here, scale fmt, better to string, http4s, and sbt, and also the scala, scala language version. Uh, so all of the updates, except for this one, are green. And I think the reason why this is not green might be that uh, this plugin might be missing on that version. I think we can just merge all of these into a single branch, try to run the tests on that and uh, and merge if that works. So I'm just gonna open a branch called uh, updates uh, 2203. Yeah, it's been a while since the last episode. I hope it's okay. Um, but And yeah, this episode I think will be like, like uh, 19 minutes long. Uh, that's the plan. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's quickly fetch, uh, actually let's fetch the steward uh, origin. And yeah, this, this gave me some branches. I'm just gonna try to merge uh, all of them one by one. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm curious uh, if we can merge a couple of branches at the same time. Uh, let's try that. Uh, I haven't really tried that before. Fifty one six two. Oh, it works. And there's an octopus strategy. That's interesting. We did get cast effect. What did I even merge? I already forgot. Uh, better to string and SBT, right? Uh, let's just try to merge everything. So cast effect. Uh, this one. I'm just gonna do it one by one. Look back. What's going on? Let me try that. Uh, look back, Weaver. That's the one. Okay, we have a conflict. Which I think should be trivial. Uh, yeah, it's just because these are like next to each other. So I'm just gonna update this version here. Yeah, this is gonna be mostly mechanical. Um, yeah. By the way, I did uh, make a 
change that wasn't just the update, adding the notes for this episode. Uh, I don't think it's very important that we keep very clean comments in this project, but uh, yeah, I didn't miss that. Uh, SBT steward, wait, no, it's SBT to focus, of course. Um, we have that. Like all of these changes are probably just very minor. Um, I'm just gonna look at the final result uh, when we have that and uh, see what we actually changed. But it looks good because all of these, uh, these PRs are green, so I'm just gonna accept them and only worry when, when something doesn't doesn't work. Or the strategy? Strange. Skeleton T, uh, we have this HTTP for us, and that's 0 0.2310. Okay, uh, I think there's a conflict in build of BT. Um, that seems to be okay. Right, uh, what next? Right, we did SBT, so uh, I'm gonna try to run the tests right now. And if that works, we can try to update the Scala language as well. So there's a bunch of downloads, of course, because I do not have these versions locally. And the tests are fine. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to merge this update as well. And that's 3.1.1. And let's try. Takes a while. But it seems to work. Let's check in if we're still recording and that's fine. And just run that again uh, because I didn't look. Okay, and we're good. It seems so. Uh, so with that, uh, I think I'm gonna just merge actually. Uh, no, wait, hold on. Uh, one more thing I wanna do, or I have to do, I need to regenerate the GitHub workflows. Uh, generate. Oh, I don't. I don't have to do that. Oh yeah, because Stuart already did it, didn't it? If it didn't, it should have. I guess it did. And that's cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna merge to main. And push. Oh, I, I was supposed to look at the, <laughs> the diff, but uh, we can still do that here. Uh, by the way, I'm using, uh, this is something new I haven't used before, for this view of the diff. That's not the standard uh, git tools. This is something that I don't even remember the, the name of. Let me just look it up real quick. Yeah, it's called Delta. So it's a, a program. Uh, Syntax highlighting Vager, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is basically it. Uh, and I have set it up with Nix, uh, which makes it really easy to use. Nix is really great at that. Uh, so all the PRs are merged. Uh, just a reminder, when you merge manually and you push to, to GitHub, it will still close the PRs as merged, uh, which is quite nice. And yeah, let's look at that. Yeah, just minor changes here, the language as well. Oh, it's actually showing the whole thing. Let me do diff. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, a larger change in Scala FMT, so I'm not sure if it's actually gonna impact our code. It might, but I don't know. Um, yeah, some version changes here, still, still very minor. Um, Kind of strange that this, is, this, this isn't highlighted, uh, but okay. 
Right, uh, looks good. Let's see what CI says. And also let's get the projects tab. Uh, I didn't have a project. Some issues? No. Cool, this is, uh, we're fine in CI, which means we can continue uh, with our, uh, our ideas. So yeah, I mentioned uh, we will be building a client front end. And also I think uh, over the time our client, our native image client has gotten a little stale and it might not be working anymore. Uh, also, I don't even think I can actually build the image here. Actually, hold on, I'm gonna import the elementals. I don't think I can actually uh, build this here locally because I'm, uh, I'm on an ARM uh, CPU right now, not on an Intel anymore. And it's a little more com complicated if I were to build this for, well, just, just build a native image. Uh, because this architecture isn't supported yet and I would need to like cross-compile cross uh, to the other architecture. And also I think I mentioned this, or if I didn't, someone did ask in the comments, we might be going to change the client to be a Scala.js based client or a Scala native one, probably Scala.js though. Uh, that will still give it faster startup and give us an opportunity to explore some other tools. Um, but it will be less problematic, like we won't need this, like the reflect config, the resource config, uh, or yeah, basically the reflect. All of this is kind of, I don't like having to, to keep this, to maintain this list. And it's not that easy to, uh, to generate it for all the code paths that we have. Uh, so yeah, I would love to avoid that. So a SkyJS solution might be easier to, to go with. Um, but yeah, for now, that's not our concern. So yeah, let's get to the client. This is the client main. And we have some setup here. We have the client that we're building the HP client, HP first client uh, using Ember, which is also available on the Node.js platform. So that's, that's cool. And we have an interpreter for Tapir and uh, and uh, an executor, so the, the interface that we use to actually perform all the actions. Uh, so we have that, and yeah, we just call some commands here. Let me just make sure that this actually works. Uh, so we're gonna run the client. That should break because we don't have a server right now. And how did error? That's a little. Uh, that could be a little more verbose, uh, or else. Yeah, because we don't have any error handler. Anything else? Base image. So let me try to run the, the server first. And in another tab, I'll run the client. Yeah, that works. Uh, that works, so that's good. Um, yeah, but this isn't how we're gonna run the client. Like, this doesn't take any parameters. Uh, so I think we should make it take some parameters. So there's this type. Um, in the model, I think, uh, we have a command. No, that's not it. Yeah, that's not the model I meant. We have two models. All right, this is the server model, this is the shared model. Uh, in here we have something called a command. That's the one. Um, and these commands, uh, like this ADT corresponds to um, to the list of commands in the executor. So in theory, we could have a, uh, an interface like execute command uh, that will return some result. Um, we're not gonna, but I'm just saying it's an option. Uh, but this type will be quite useful to us in a second uh, once we get to work with the command line interface. Uh, but first of all, I'm actually going to, uh, I think we can actually use enums now. Uh, we didn't because of some issues, if you remember the first episodes, uh, there were some issues with Magnolia or, or Tapir, and now they are not there anymore. So I think we can actually replace this with uh, an enum. I can't remember, it seems like we've already done that, but I don't have the sources, so I just assume we didn't. Uh, maybe I did off screen and I reverted it. So let me just try that again. So enum, command, it's gonna be fairly straightforward. Um, case 
Mm, I don't see any any uh, implicits for that, any givens, any derives, but here we're gonna have some so base, something like that. Case, yeah. That's that's pretty straightforward, as I said. Uh, we're not gonna have any complexity in this rewrite, I think. Mm, right. Just use case. And this, I think it needs to actually go to the companion object. Yeah. Okay, error. That also needs a, a codec and a schema. And that's also going to be an enum. We're going to keep the extends clause because we, we need it to be an exception. Um, there we go. By the way, I'm recording this on the last day of my nine day vacation. Uh, vacation has been great. I really recommend taking some uh, every now and then, even if you're gonna just stay at home. Uh, that's still pretty nice. Uh, custom scheme. I think this is not uh, not doesn't apply anymore. We actually did that. Uh, derive schema. Oh no, actually we didn't. Uh, we don't have this schema. Like this doesn't match uh, the, this this uh, because the schema, the type of schema is gonna be uh, like a an array on the JSON level. An array of bytes, but in reality, it's going to be a string uh, in our representation because of this two hex, which is used in the codec. Uh, so yeah, we can tackle that at some point if we ever generate this fogger. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to make a difference, I think. Okay, uh, any other things that could be enums? Uh, doesn't seem like it. Let um, me look for our sealed traits. None. Okay, let's just make sure the test pass. All right, there we go. So this does uh, take quite a while now. Uh, mostly I think it's the property-based test. Uh, one of them takes like six or five seconds. Uh, it was here somewhere. Yeah, this one takes one second, one second, one second. Uh, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, anyway, we have some, we have enough tests that it actually takes this much, uh, but we have a couple property-based tests, so that's all good. Uh, what else? Hash, I think it does have a custom codec, so we don't need this, and uh, that's actually more accurate. All right, uh, I'm gonna commit this as a refactor. Um, right, and push. Now, uh, I mentioned we will be using, defining a client interface for this, so um, I'm gonna add a library. I don't think we have it yet. Uh, it's called decline. And we're gonna use the decline effect uh, integration. The version is 2.0, and we're gonna be using it only in the client. So there it goes. And yeah, let's import. So, uh, some explanation. This is the library uh, that we're talking about. Uh, and it's a library, library for command line interfaces. Uh, the most important part is that you uh, specify the, uh, the commands that you support uh, in a kind of declarative fashion. Uh, we're gonna talk about the syntax in a bit when I'm actually developing that. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty nice thing because you get to like show the structure declaratively so it doesn't need to be analyzed at runtime with some like shady reflection or anything like that. Or we don't need macros or anything uh, compile time either. It's mostly just like structure of the code. And uh, the client is able to infer the documentation and the parsing of the options using just what you write in, in your Scala. Uh, you're gonna see what I mean in, in a second. So, that's gonna be in the client in here. So let me comment this out. 
We're gonna keep some of that, for example, the part uh, where we actually instantiate all these things, but mostly we're not. Uh, so if I were to just use the client, I would use command up here. And the first thing is like, uh, yeah, let's just call it Steve. Um, header, uh, yeah, let's just use everything. Uh, the header, I don't think we actually need one, do we? Okay, I'm gonna keep it an empty string or just uh, online or Steve. And uh, we have to pass in ops. So for now, I'm just gonna say ops uh, pure or just ops uh, with unit. And what else? I think that's that's all we need to pass. Um, yeah, we have some optional arguments then, but this would be good enough. And now I can run the, the client app. And yeah, it doesn't do anything. Uh, so there's also this command IO app, uh, which is a bit similar, except we don't pass the ops here and it's not an ops of unit. Uh, we pass, uh, we implement main, which is an ops of IO uh, of exit code, right? And now I think it might be easier to understand if we just go with the pure, uh, pure world. Uh, we're gonna have a print line here, hello world. And it's gonna return exit code success. Now if I run that, uh, we're gonna just see this print line here. Um, and so far we, we are not parsing any arguments or anything like that, but but we could. So ops is this, this abstraction for uh, taking some command line input. And it's not even monadic, like you cannot say ops unit flat map. Uh, so you cannot make options that depend on other options. You, you kind of can, but not in this exact way. Um, you wouldn't use flat map because flat map is inherently not analyzable. You cannot analyze what goes, what happens inside the flat map like this, if you don't actually provide a value for you know, what the flat map gets called with. Uh, you would need a result in order to build this. So we cannot, cannot work on that um, with that requirement. However, um, we can combine, like, we can make, like, you know, sub commands and stuff like that in a different way. Uh, we're gonna get to that later. Also, I don't want this to be like a decline tutorial. Uh, we might get one in the future on the channel, but this isn't gonna be it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to hand wave most of the work a bit. Uh, let's say we had, a, we, we wanted to parse this input, like, um, message message, right? Something like this. And then maybe, um, maybe let's make this, let's have another optional argument, uh, or option. Actually, that's an option, not an argument. Arguments are called, uh, these things that you just pass after spaces. Uh, if you can name them, that's an option mm, or a flag if it's a Boolean. And yeah, actually let's make it a, have a verbose flag that's optional. So the way that you would encode this in, in Scala, like the result of parsing this would be something like a input a message and a verbose flag. I'm gonna make it a Boolean, but it's gonna be like an option of Boolean. Uh, we'll see. No, I think it will actually, actually just be a Boolean. Uh, anyway, the way you do it mm, with uh, the client, Let's focus on this part first, so the message. So this will be an opts uh, option, and it's an option of a string. Uh, we can pass any type here, which has the argument type class instance. And argument is basically parsing from string to an A, right? So actually we can, we can go there. Mm. That's not the one, yeah, this argument, I think. Let's hope metals can navigate there. Okay, maybe not, uh, maybe from... Let's try that again. Oh, I think it hanged. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. Let's try to reconnect or connect. Yeah, I think it hanged because it's trying to format and it's taking a while. Let me just kill metals. 
So this happens every now and then. Nothing too surprising here. Mm. Yeah, I should have killed it here. Let me just reload the whole window. Just some normal metals use it here. All right. Let's hope we can actually navigate this time. Let me try this. All right, that works. Uh, so yeah, basically parsing from a string to a validated null of a string and an A. So we either succeed with an A or we have a list, an non-empty list of strings uh, of the errors in, in the parsing. And there's a convenient uh, way to go from uh, just a string to validate it now. Uh, you can also pass like the default meta var, which is the basically it's going to end up in this place. Uh, yeah, in the placeholder. This will also show up in like the, the docs. Uh, yeah, actually, I should I should say it. Uh, I should try to run this. This just runs the code, right? But if we were to say uh, to pass a help flag. Mm, yeah, we get the help docs on standard output. Uh, I'm using this just to separate the arguments for my application, for Steve, from the arguments for Bloop. Uh, if we had a native image or a, you know, a standalone Scala app, we would just pass this. Uh, but yeah, we get this, this information here. Um, honestly, I'm not really sure why this showed up here. That would come up from, from Bloop. I don't see why it, why it even parsed that. But yeah, anyway. Mm, I think we can also say version. If we had a version specified, we might not be able to do it here. Uh, let's try uh, true and something like 100. Yeah, that's gonna show us the version. So that's pretty cool. Uh, increase the font again. Mm, and yeah, we're gonna get to this again. Uh, so we're gonna have an option of a string and that's gonna be a message. Um, and the help is going to be just the message to print. And uh, we can have a short option. We don't have to. Like by default, it's an empty string, so it will be ignored. Um, we can say like M. Uh, and metavar is is this basically? I think it might just be string if we if we keep it like this. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be my input for now. And what I can do is I can say that my main is input map the string, this message, right? We're gonna do a print line message and the rest just stays as it was. And we can remove this option here, this, this opts. And now I have an opts of string on which I map uh, to pass the program. Like this, this is the program that will run once we have parsed the input, right? So if I run that, uh, let's just run it like this. Yeah, it's missing an expected flag. And we, if we do help, we will see this, this uh, info here. So this is a string uh, and I can call this uh, pass the meta var message. Just say something like that. And now it shows up here. Uh, of course, you would probably not use the same name and meta var. Uh, so I'm just gonna use this and keep a string in there, for example. Uh, so we have the, uh, the message part for the case class. But we don't have the, the verbose part. And for that, we would be uh, doing something like oops flag, uh, call it uh, verbose, help uh, enable verbose output, and short will be something like v. We can, again, we can just skip this, uh, use the default, which is, which basically means no default, no short option. Um, and yeah, so that's our flag, and it's going to be an ops of unit. Uh, because it passes only when there is a flag, when there's this verbose option. But if it's not present, uh, we can just say or uh, false. So it will be a boolean instead. But it, it only works if you have an ops of unit and you turn it into a, an ops of boolean. Uh, so now, given these two, right, given these two things, I can build an ops of input. Let me just put these into vals so that it's more uh, easier to understand. So we have the message and we have the, uh, the verbosity. 
So we can use this pattern at the applicative builder or map n uh, and just pass input apply here. Uh, so the way this works is ops has an apply instance, maybe even an applicative instance. Uh, let me try that. Yeah, there's a, a full-blown applicative instance, even an alternative instance. Uh, that's a slightly stronger uh, type in cats. Uh, this one. Um, so yeah, we even have that uh, for uh, for decline ops, which is really nice. By the way, this is just a metal feature, uh, like the, these synthetics here, these implicits. And we can now navigate, which is pretty nice. Like I've missed this for a while, so it's really cool that it's uh, now available in in metals and even in Scala three. So that's really nice. Uh, I only wish these like uh, refreshed very well. Uh, sometimes I have to switch back and from different files. Mm. All right. So we have the input. Uh, the ops of input and now we can again uh, take this now we're gonna have to save this message and for example i can do this with a condition and when message verbose is enabled then we print otherwise we don't something like this for example so if i just call this it's gonna fail uh, parsing so let's say message is hello and this will not print because the verbose flag is off but if I enable it, it's just going to print now. So this is the basic usage of, of uh, the client. And if you have, for example, some alternative options, like parse this or that, then you can combine that with um, this funky operator. Or I think this one, no. Yeah, I think it's just, just this or, or else. Uh, this should be the same. So if, for example, we could say uh, our input is uh, yeah, something like uh, set a string uh, or case get. Let's remove that. So it's going to be either like s something or get, like an, uh, an argument. Uh, then you could say, let's, let's remove this and that as well. Mm, Just get it to compile. Uh, so yeah, for this one, for example, would be uh, opts uh, option string s. Uh, something like that. Mm, argument string get. So that's going to be a uh, ops of string actually. Uh, but I could map this to input set and map this to input get like this. Yeah, that's that's how you'd write it. And now it's a, an ops of input and you can do whatever you want. Just just pattern match on this inside the, the ops. For example, if you were to do input uh, map now you get to do whatever you want with the input and uh, disambiguate by uh, pattern matching or anything else. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, we have a specific purpose that we, that we need to build for here. And we basically, I think we want to mirror this model of the command from here. So we're going to have an ops of command. And based on that, not even ops of, of command, I think, uh, we'll see. Uh, we need a way to conveniently take parameters such as this, like the build command, and it has a list of commands which might not be that easy to um, to take. So I think maybe we will just take a path to a file for now and convert that into a build by loading the file. Mm, yeah, I think that, that's what we're going to do. So we're not actually going to use this exact structure. We're gonna, I'm actually gonna copy paste it, but we're gonna do something uh, a little different. So don't worry, we're gonna move that later, or maybe not. Uh, we we'll have a command, or let's call it um, CLI command. Is that the name? 
Yeah, let's just use that for now. We're gonna do a build, but that's gonna take a uh, Steve file. Like, you know, like we have a Docker file. We're gonna have a Steve file. Um, trying to come up with a funnier name. Stevie file, let's call it Stevie file. That's how I'm gonna pronounce it from now on. Uh, and yeah, whatever, we're gonna just have a file. And this will be a path. And I think I will be using an FS2 path. Because constructing an FS2 path, I think it doesn't take, um, it doesn't actually have effects. There's this apply, oh, but it takes, hmm. I think it is, it's supposed to be used like this, so it doesn't have an effect in here. So we should be fine just taking it like that. The problem is that we cannot do IO inside the notes with, if we don't get want to get an IO of the thing. Mm. All right, you know what? I think I have a new idea. Uh, so instead of having an ops of uh, CLI command, we will have an ops of IO of C CLI command. And this will already take care of parsing the, like loading the file, right, inside that IO. So at this point, we maybe I actually should use the, the model from here. Not this one, the one uh, in shared. Yeah, let's try to just build for this. So it's gonna be command. So yeah, we're back to, to square one. So let's do something like this. Uh, once we have that, that input, actually, this is gonna be super easy. I have this, right? Mm, so now I map and here, basically, I just need the function from command to IO of uh, exit code or even IO of unit. And uh, success, actually that's gonna be flat map. Yeah, so as long as I can provide this, like a function from command to IO of unit, we're good. An executor has something similar, but each of these has a different output. So we need something that will be like an executor plus printing the output somehow, and then just return unit. So for now, I'm just gonna implement this in a very simple way. Uh, we're gonna pattern match. So we have command uh, build with a build. Mm. I think we're just gonna print the input. Actually, we're just gonna do that for all inputs. So uh, command, just print the whole command, the, the whole parse input. Uh, but eventually we will actually uh, like pass uh, these inputs to uh, the executor and then print the result. So this, uh, we will have three possible commands and we will be combining them together. Mm. And I think I want an API, something like this. So Steve, um, build, yeah, close enough. Uh, build and something like Steve Jason uh, or just build Jason or just this and we will be using build Jason or whatever name we decide to use as a default. Mm, this is gonna be the path, right? And then we're also gonna have Steve uh, run uh, hash. I think that is the, the thing we don't wanna do. Run hash, yeah. And then list images takes no arguments. So Steve list, mm, yeah, I think that works. So let me try to do it. Uh, we're gonna have to build. Uh, yeah, let's just try to uh, implement that. So this is gonna be opts uh, subcommand. The name is gonna be build. Um, let me see if I just need an opts. Or yeah, let's just. I think I want not not this one. I want this. So name, oh, that's nice. I can actually navigate here. Didn't realize that. Mm, so we want name, help. These are the required ones. And then we have opts for the content of the command. All right, 
so just build, uh, build an image. Mm. And here we pass the opts that will correspond to the actual arguments to this, uh, this command. So just a path. And that's actually uh, what I need. But the suggestion is, is, is okay here. So we need a path, which is going to be a Java path. I think that's the, uh, if we use a default path, like the Java path, the client actually supports that natively. So now we can take that path and uh, let me see. Yeah, we can take that path and do something like files uh, read all path. Actually, uh, F2 path, path. Uh, I'm going to just drain that to a string and parse it from JSON. Uh, yeah, parse it to JSON and decode it to the uh, a Steve build. We thankfully already have an, uh, a codec, so that's good. Mm. Yeah, I think that's, that's gonna work. That's gonna work pretty well. Uh, what's wrong here? Path from an IO path. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, now we need to go like through. Do I need to? I said I needed a string, right? So I can either uh, parse it like in a streaming fashion or I can just read the whole file and parse it then. I think it's fine to just read it in whole. So mm, through FS2 text, uh, UTF8. We're gonna decode it uh, to, and that will give us like a stream of strings. Compile string uh, should give us an AO of string. Uh, so far so good, I have a string. Uh, let me do something so that we get a compiling file. Uh, currently this is an ops of IO string. Um, I'm gonna take that string. Actually we can do it. We can actually do all of this in here. Uh, and I'm up. All right, this, this is my string. Uh, here, just gonna say, Command and return build. All right, now it compiles, all good. And if we actually try to run this, we'll see that we need a, a command. So something like build. Now we'll need some more arguments, the path. Mm, something like that. And it breaks because it's a directory. Of course it is. That already helps us find out about an issue. We actually want this to take like uh, Steve Jason, maybe. Let me actually create that file to, for testing. Mm. And we need something that looks like a build, right? Uh, let me actually try to get it from the, the history. Something like that, yeah. So I'm just gonna steal that uh, from here. Something like this, a good example. Mm, yeah, let's try running that now. And yeah, we got to this point, which I think is uh, the expected behavior. Uh, so we have the string we want. Uh, Jason, let me see if we can have a parser. We do not, I don't think we do. Yeah, we don't have that. So I'm gonna add Cersei uh, parser. And that's gonna be 0 014 1. Okay. And we need it in a client. Yeah, we don't have a Cersei version yet. So I think that's good. I'm just, I'm just gonna use that here. And import. In the meantime, I think this will be just. Uh, I also see parser decode. Wait, we do have that? That's strange. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this actually. Uh, I think Tapir might be including that, but the only way to find out would be to look at the dependency graph. Mm, and thankfully, I think we have that. Uh, we can enable this. 
so that we get uh, stuff like mm, stuff like what depends on. We can say something like this. First, I need to update what depends on SRC. Come on. Okay, SRC parser uh, three. Okay, that works, but uh, I don't like the UI, so maybe dependency browse tree HTML. No, wait, just browse tree. And I should have been more explicit because I just needed this for client, but yeah, let's look. So we want a parser, Cersei so parser. And yeah, I was right, so tap here. Uh, tap your JSON Cersei actually, actually this is that. So yeah, I think that's cool. Uh, all right. Mm. So we can just use this. And we want to decode to uh, a build. And I'm actually going to do a flat map. And if this fails, I'm going to lift to IO. So the exception will be raised in the IO channel. Uh, we can later like think of some better error handling here. I don't care too much. Just want to get this to work. Uh, so I'm not going to change that. So you have a Steve build, but that's not a command. We need to make it a command. And thankfully we can just wrap it in, in this kind of command. Uh, for example, here and build and we have a command. So let's try to run that again. And it works. It actually parsed the file and uh, showed the command. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna uh, keep this. We have one of these commands and now we can try to pattern match on this and try to execute that command. So command build with a build. Let's repeat this for all the other kinds of commands. Um, this images, that's just gonna be a to-do as well. And now this build, um, yeah, that's gonna be tricky a little. Mm. So we need all of this and also the logger, I think. Uh, up to here, I think we need all of this. So the logger run, um, that's not gonna compel, not, not a chance, but we're pretty close to what I need. I think this will give, the, give us a, an executor, exec, and this will be a just executor of IO. Mm. And not use, but map, and that's actually gonna be a resource because of this. Yeah. So we have this, ex uh, this resource with the executor, and we're gonna, ha we have to acquire this resource Sorry, and execute these commands using that. Uh, let me see what the best way would be. Because I don't want to do something like exec use um, build build. I mean, that would work, uh, but it's gonna be a lot of duplication when we have to basically copy paste this part and this part. Well, it's not a lot of duplication, but I, it's the kind of duplication that I think we can avoid quite easily. So I would like to. Uh, I just want this part to be here, right? So, command, we can probably do something like this. So, exec use, um, exec, let's do something like command match. Here we'll do this pattern match. Uh, this will be just exec build. I think this is correct. Also, this is duplicated, so we don't need the, the success. Mm. Yeah, I think that looks right. So given a server, like right now, if, it, if I run this, it's gonna fail because there's no, no server. But if I run the server first, and now here, let me run the client. That should build and send this to the server. And it, it seems like it did. 
the server says so. Uh, maybe let's print the result of that. So like, I have print line, prompt, prompt line. Uh, print line uh, build, or let me just show the hash so that it's compatible with like scripts uh, to hex. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And if I run it again, it's gonna be the same result because the hash is gonna be the same. I think that's really nice. I didn't want to close that. Uh, we're not going to touch the server a lot, so I'm just going to keep it running. In the meantime, we can implement all the other commands. Uh, so we have build. Now we need run and list. I think list is going to be significantly easier because it has no, no arguments at all. Also, in the future, we could possibly uh, refactor this a bit um, to move it away. Like this kind of parsing logic, move it away from the command parsing logic. Uh, but yeah, no big deal. So list. That would be opt subcommand list and uh, list all images or known images. Mm. And we're not gonna take any inputs, this is just gonna be opt unit. And isn't that just it? Just this opts actually of command uh, list images. I think that's it. So just list something like that. And it doesn't work because. Oh yeah, there's supposed to be IO. So I'm just gonna say IO unit, IO pure of that. So if we run that, we should see the image we just built. To do, wow. Of course I need to implement that. Uh, yeah, just call exec list and print line on that. So hashes or images. Let's see what GitHub's on Copilot wants to, to do here. Come on. Yeah, actually that works. Even if I did print line here, that should work. Uh, that's not gonna be for each though, it's gonna be traverse. It's always gonna be traverse. Yeah, that works. Uh, that's pretty nice. Although it's still pretty slow, uh, I'm not entirely sure why it takes this long. I guess now it's about a second, but it might be just a JVM startup. Um, and also allocating the, the Ember client takes a little. Uh, on JS, it's gonna be all below a second, I think. We, we can try that in the next episode, maybe. Right, so we can, we can list images. Let's actually try to pretend we can implement this as well. So exec run hash. This gives me a system state. So uh, let's try to print this. And I'm thinking of an interface like, uh, yeah, something like this. So. Um, Yeah, we should have a pretty print method. I'm gonna try to get one. Mm. Let's see what the suggestion is. That looks about right. So we're gonna see like a key value, um, new line separated string. Let's just have two, two lines here. I uh, have preprint like this. Let's try to parse this. Mm. So run. Uh, that's close. That's close. Yeah, we're gonna have a subcommand called run run build image. And yeah, oops argument hash. That's pretty close. Uh, except we still need to make this a hash, like an actual hash type, right? Uh, and we have parse. Yeah, I think this is this is good. Uh, although why is this just a string? We're using that in here in the decoder. 
Okay. Do not try. That's also good. So I'm gonna actually change it right now. It's gonna be a throwable. Um, and we're gonna make this like a new exception. Yeah, just like that. Parse, parse, emap, try. To try. Is there another one? Like, what else can we do? There's map. Validate. Oh, that's too low level. So there's an emap. Is there actually a, like a monad error for decoder? Um, Alright, yeah, I just want like any type here. Um, throwable. Okay, maybe not throwable. Okay, let's just look here. Does it fall? Monad error, result decoding failure. So, what I want to do here is something like a flat map actually. Yeah, we could do it this way. So map or just map and uh, like refrow. If we can get this, uh... yeah, maybe this should have been a string actually. I'm just gonna revert that. Keep it simple. Uh, keep a string here. I just realized that it would be much more complex to uh, change it on the definition side than to just wrap the string in the parsing failure. Uh, so yeah, we need flat map. Actually no, map here. Mm. It's gonna be parse, left map. Uh, so I'm wrapping this string in an exception like this. Uh, maybe we, we probably should have like some specific exception, but um, this is what I'm doing. Uh, left to IO, this should give us uh, an IO of hash. Mm. And we do have that. And now we need to wrap that in command run right here. And now we need to also wire this, this uh, command like this. We could define all of that in a single expression, by the way, there's no need to have these valves other than like potential clarity. Uh, I think this is all right. Um, what else? This could be a single line. Yeah, this probably deserves some refactoring. So I'm gonna uh, rename this to something like eval, maybe. So we're gonna have an executor of IO and a command. Actually, this is gonna be a command here. Command to IO of unit. And it's gonna be just this part. Seems to work. Well, it seems to parse and uh, type check. Uh, and we would use this right here. Eval exec command. Perfect. Yeah, so effectively all our input handling is delegated to the client in here, in this part here, in this expression. Uh, then we build the executor, we use this with this eval function and that gives us the final result. Uh, we could even split it up even like a little more, like this doesn't have to be a unit, it could be for example the string that we want to output or a stream of strings and we would do printing just in here. That could actually work right now, so if I do a string, uh, hash the string or just hex, and return this, that's gonna be map, that's gonna be map. Um, this is also gonna be map, so just images, uh, make string. And now if we have this, we can do flat map, IO print line in a single place. 
So if we try to list, we'll get the list again. Can we get this? Uh, unexpected argument, yet yeah, it's called run. There we go. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. So now given this hash, we could have another build. Uh, for example, we will start with, uh, of course, we're like no human being is gonna write this kind of file, right? We're gonna have something like a Steve file in which, which we have some more Docker file-like syntax. Uh, so like from empty, or, like this would be missing, right? This would be just absurd, hello world. This would be the entire file. Uh, or something like from this, or from a tag uh, that we, we, we don't have tags yet. We might get some in the future. Uh, yeah. All right. So base empty image. Uh, yeah, I think I wanted to have a base with a specific image. Uh, so build build, base, and image, image reference. That's the name, so image reference. And the, the key was, that's not it. Uh, okay, uh, again, base, image reference, hash. So hash, so this should be nice. Absurd, how to, something different. Let's try to build that again. So now we should have two images in the in the database. Yep. And let's try to run this one. Okay. Yeah, so this is just forked from this initial state. Uh, if I were to restart the server right now, this would no longer be able be possible to build because the base is gone. All right, let me let me roll this back. Okay, and I think that's actually good enough to make a commit at this point. Maybe uh, this is no longer necessary, no longer useful at all. Uh, let me try to clean up a bit. Uh, I think we still need all of this. Maybe not this. I guess this is another good moment to complain about the lack of unused imports warnings in Scala 3. I really miss these and uh, I think it's a really important thing for tooling uh, and for the ad adoption of the language to have any kind of linting in the compiler, which is there in Scala 2, just not there in Scala 3. So, uh, yeah, implement command line front end for the client. That's gonna be my commit. By the way, I should have run the tests. We possibly should have some tests for the, the command line parsing. Uh, in, in, in particular for this part or some like end-to-end -end tests possibly. Uh, I haven't really thought much about how we're going to do end-to-end -end tests, like proper end-to-end -end tests, because this isn't end-to-end. -end. Uh, I'm thinking of like calling the main method of this with some parameters and seeing if we get the right output as a string. Uh, but for now, I don't think that's what we uh, want to do. That's not the scope for this, this episode at least. So what's the next step? I think it would be actually nice to test this parsing um, in isolation, like just this part where we uh, yeah, do that. Uh, ideally, we could also not have this IO step. I kind of don't like it. So maybe a CLI command as an intermediate step would be a nice idea. Uh, I'm just gonna do it. So uh, CLI command. Uh, yeah, that's not what I wanted at all. Uh, we're gonna have build, which takes a context path maybe. Uh, okay, it's so run, hash, hash. Actually, should it be a hash or just a string? Yeah, let's make it a hash. And then we'll have a 
list. So this will be parsing a CLI command without the IO. And then we'll go from that to uh, input parsed or input loaded. I will rename that uh, very soon. Uh, let me copy paste this real quick. Uh, this goes here, but uh, for example, all this part is gonna go away to the other one. So input map case uh, CLI command build context. Yeah. Okay, that, that actually works. That's really nice. Uh, so we need CLI command in here. Uh, let's drop this and build. This will be CLI command run. And this will be CLI command less images without the IO. And also not list images, but yeah, list images. Oh, let's just call it list. On this level, we might as well. Uh, CLI command, also this IO. Yeah, we, we need to avoid this uh, IO part here. So I'll need to change this, this a little bit. Uh, And also, because right now this parsing of the hash is in I.O., we will not actually get the output. If we were to pass a hash that's not a hash, we'll get the output a little too late. If we do it early inside the client's framework of sorts, uh, we will get better output in the help messages. So it's in our best interest to do so. So we can map, we can validate, uh, or I think there's something like map validated, yeah. So we can do that. Or we can define an argument instance for hash. That would work as well. Uh, so map validated. Now we're gonna have a string, parse, and what's the left side? String, yeah. So now we no longer need to wrap an, an exception. That's really nice. Um, either string. Yeah, so this will be to validated now. And that's, that's it. So we have a CLI command in the opts. Um, yeah, this can be on this level. You can simplify a bit. And now all that remains, we need... Uh, hmm. Okay, let me finish this up and then uh, I'll suggest something. So CLI command run. Uh, hash. Now we can do uh, command run hash. Mm. Right. Pure IO. And the same goes for uh, list. This will be command list images, pure IO. And what's wrong? Guess the indentation. Uh, so one problem I have with this is that we have this big expression. Input is a big expression, right? This is relatively large. And then we map on that, we add some more stuff. But what we could do is have just an abstraction for just this block, uh, this conversion between the two kinds of commands and connect that on a, on a higher level, for example, in, in here. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna make this, you know, uh, we're gonna use input loaded just verify that this compiles, it does. Uh, but I think I will make this change. So this will be uh, something like um, convert command uh, for the lack of a better name. And this is gonna go from CLI command to IO of uh, command. So something like parsing the command even further. Uh, and instead of mapping, we'll just have this function, but we will map on input here with uh, map, uh, actually even here, convert command. Yeah. So I, I think I quite like all of this. Also, here's a nice usage of the, um, the monadic properties of IO. We can actually move this line outside and this is exactly the same. Um, yeah, that's what, because of one of the monad laws, I think uh, associativity. 
so yeah, uh, we have convert command uh, using the executor. We have the eval function, which does most of the dirty work. Mm. And the print line, and this can be outside, yeah. Uh, what else? I think that's actually good enough. The most important part is that here we have this input step, which parses the command, but everything else is... Um, this is the declarative part, and then we start the I.O. Uh, by composing some functions, we uh, get quite well-separated behavior. Mm. So we can probably move all of this command parsing somewhere. Uh, so something like... Um, Let's actually call this a front end. It's a weird name, but uh, maybe it uh, makes sense in this context. Like it's it is a front end of sorts. Mm. But I will not commit this yet. Let's just commit at this point. Uh, so we have all of that. Uh, so we defined CLI command. Uh, add CLI command. Intermediate step. Yeah, I think we'll actually just do commands today and finish with that. Uh, so let me update the readme. Just the client front end. This again gets pushed back to another episode. Uh, but I think we're getting closer. Like uh, in the next episode, we'll probably add some streaming to the output uh, so that we uh, can see what's going on in the build, maybe some colors or whatever, closer to what Docker does in the client. Mm, yeah, we'll see. Uh, right, so we have that, and I was going to add a, a front end. Maybe let's actually do a little trick here. Uh, I'm going to move all of the code in there, but we'll use metals or try to, yeah, to extract this object to a different file. Mm, so we have still a command input, convert command. This probably still. Uh, belongs in the front end. Mm. Yeah, maybe not. Let, let's actually just move this. So this is gonna be a front end type, and this is gonna be a front end parse input. Let's call it like that. Yeah, so this conversion of the command lives in here for now. Let's actually put it closer to the, to the eval. Um, yeah, this, uh, I'm not really sure. Like maybe this should live in the front end. Maybe it shouldn't. Uh, I think this place is as good as any. Uh, also, we could make this more parametric. Why not? So this will require a files actually, not just an async. We can do well with files. Uh, that's a, a convenient uh, like capacity and capability trait. Um, so we can use this. It, it does require an, an async instance, but you don't need an async instance to work with this. Uh, I think I covered this in a video about the death of blocker. Uh, I'll try to put in a link to it. But yeah, the good part is that we, we can work in a poly effect polymorphic context without actually having the full power of async uh, because of this, this trait. Uh, so we need files. We also need uh, an FS2 compiler from F to F. And we also need a monad because we need flat map. Yeah, at least flat map. Um, Right, this is I.O. It shouldn't have to be I.O. as well here. We will actually need one at throw uh, because we are raising an exception. And this needs to be F. This will be uh, I.O. And what else? This can also be uh, effect polymorphic, I think. So we'll just replace all the I.O.s with F's and see what breaks. Uh, we'll need a functor because we are using just map. And just to be very specific, I'll say this is IO. By the way, I think we can say F equals IO. Right, this is an experimental feature. 
and I don't have it yet. I, I'm, I'm not going to enable that uh, just for this use case. It's not that, that useful anyway in this context. Uh, so what else do we need to do? Is there anything else that I can make polymorphic? I guess this, but it will actually require async. Uh, I think that will be all it requires actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now, as I said, I'm gonna extract front end to a new file. And this is going to rely on some imports that it doesn't need. Uh, both of the files are now going to have that. Mm, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to disable all the, remove all the unused imports by hand. Uh, for example, this one, this one, this, this, uh, HTTP for as well. Uh, files, is that going to be useful here? No. I'm going to go up, um, front up, resource, async, IO. None of that is going to be useful. How about cuts and placets? Yep. Okay, let's leave that. Okay, and now here, uh, I think we can skip a couple. Mm, this one. Actually, how about we just start from scratch? I know we'll, we're going to need this, but the rest, I think we can just uh, maybe use this. Import all missing symbols that are ambigu unambiguous. A resource, HP first kind interpreter, files from FS2, what else? Huh? Okay. Uh, exit code, I think that, that will be the last one. Yeah, it's a little cleaner. And yeah, so we have front end, I think we're, we're there. I'm going to close the server now. Okay. Okay. Uh, with this I can push and yeah, I was going to, to do tests. Uh, let's, let's do that. Uh, so we're going to just test this part input part for now. Uh, so source, the Scala, Steve, uh, front and this. Mm, let me see what the convention was. Uh, right, we need to find Weaver. Hasher, yeah. Uh, so this is a test, and it extends simply OC. It's fine. And it's an object. Yeah. Front end tests. So, um, what we're going to do effectively is do something like front end uh, parse input. I'm going to try to parse this, and I'm not sure what the way was to do that. Mm. Here's the problem. We need to go from an I opt to the parse thing using a list of strings. Uh, and opts, I think, doesn't doesn't define that interface, but we can see what command IO app is doing. So it does uh, run. Yeah, command parse. We pass the arguments. So there is a... Uh, right, if we have a command, we have the parse method, so we're gonna we're gonna have to do that. So command, uh, the client command. Let me import the client. Okay. Uh, command. It's gonna have a name. It doesn't really matter, so I can call it test. Uh, then we have header. It can be empty. Help flag. Actually, uh, does this work? Does is this necessary? And it is. So test command. I'm just gonna try to call it once, and then we can extract some useful interface for the reuse. And now I can do parse and pass some arguments. I'm gonna make it a parameter. 
Mm. Yeah, that looks right. Uh, let's actually make it a var args uh, parameter. And just going to be like test command. Uh, we have args and the environment is going to be empty, I think. Yeah, it's an empty environment. We, we are not going to use the environment much. So for now, I can just ignore it like that. Uh, okay. And the result is an either of help and CLI command. Uh, so I'm going to do a left map on this. I want to avoid this uh, this help. Or maybe, what is help, really? It's a case class. Made of strings. Maybe we can actually keep it. Uh, so the point is that when I write a pure test, which I think we can just use a simple suite, is that the name? Uh, fun suite. Yeah, that's the pure test, yeah. Uh, so, I can say something like uh, list command. It doesn't have any uh, any arguments. It's just a very simple subcommand. Uh, so when I do this, I can do something like test command uh, list to assert equals, and this is going to be a write with. Uh, CLI command list. But now we need an eek of either help and CLI command. I think an eek of just help will fulfill that constraint. So eek of help, I think we can do from universal equals. So this eek will return true when, based on the equals method uh, provided by the case class. Uh, this still doesn't work, I think. Because CLI command doesn't have eek. So I'm gonna define that as well. Mm, we should eventually look at kittens. So, yeah, there's a library called kittens, which uh, is supposed to give you uh, derivations for certain type classes in cats. Um, I wonder if it has documentation for this class resupport. support. Mm, it's supposed to work. Mm. Like automatically uh, might be in the releases maybe it's not actually supported on Scala 3 maybe I uh, mistook it for something I did see support for Scala 3 derivations in CATS somewhere but not sure which library it was maybe it's 300 this milestone dotty Yeah, that was updated like a month ago. Okay, uh, I can't see anything about the derives keywords. I'm just gonna define it normally. Uh, so eek of CLI command, that's just gonna be from universal equals anyway. Nothing magical in there. So list. Um, yeah, that, that should work. Let's run these tests. All right, that, that seems to work. Uh, but never trust a test you haven't seen fail. Okay, it runs. Yeah, so this is what we get in the output, like a diff of the result. It's just a string-based uh, diff. So yeah, mm, I think we can actually just keep it, maybe with a different name. Uh, so, Parse command. That didn't work very well. Uh, yeah. So we have this command. We have uh, the build command. Um, let's see if we have. Yeah, that's not the good test. Uh, so parse command. We're gonna do build and like a file path, something like this. Uh, and this should be. A write with CLI command uh, build with a path like this or a new path or paths get actually that's the API 
So my question is, is this actually resolving anything? It's probably not. Uh, like I don't want a side effect in here, but uh, because this is also built into the client, I think we might be fine. Like we, this isn't a side effect that we have to track specifically. Uh, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, anyway, it seems to be, to be working fine. Uh, Yeah, what if I use the path that doesn't exist? It's just gonna fail at the comparison, but it doesn't doesn't actually read the path or try to resolve it. Uh, anyway, uh, we have the, this test and then run command. Um, so we're gonna have to give it a, a good hash, uh, otherwise it's not gonna it's gonna work. Uh, press command run let me just use something here and then uh that's not gonna be it it's gonna be a hash uh right some bytes here uh i think i'm gonna steal the hash from the hash tests that's the best way um, i'm gonna parse this one mm -hmm. By the way, uh, yeah, I did wrap that in, a, in an effect. That's good. Uh, so this is not what I wanted. I wanted this hash in here. Now let's see if we can actually get this value generated somehow. Uh, probably if I run this. Uh, right, hash, right. So the two string actually doesn't tell us what the bytes are. Uh, I could say something like hash parse. And this one like this and get, but that's kind of cheating. Uh, what about the hasher? It doesn't actually list any of the bytes. That's a little sad. Hmm. So the idea is Let's just pass a hash, something like this, vector, empty, empty vector. Uh, I'm just gonna print this. Uh, hash parse, yeah, just like that. And I'll take this output, uh, right, that's not, obviously that, that's still using the two string. Uh, but what I really want is map this to the, to the bytes and print this as a vector. Hopefully I can just copy paste that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I still think uh, if we have to pass the concrete concrete uh, bytes in here, we're sort of testing the wrong thing because we, we could be testing that in a test of parse. We, we don't have any, but that's, not, that's a different topic. Uh, maybe this actually wasn't such a bad idea. Like just do to option get because it's supposed to work. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. So kind of cheating, but not really. Uh, it's not the purpose of this test that we test how the parsing works. Uh, this should happen somewhere else. Uh, I'm just gonna move this to a, to a val. And this is gonna be a hash string. And let's see if this still works. It seems like it does. Uh, yeah, so this is this is it, I guess. Uh, adding this eek uh, instance and these tests. Uh, so test the frontend. Now another thing we could be testing is um, this conversion. We could be testing that it does read the file correctly. Uh, this, for example, could be but extract it into a different algebra, something that doesn't, that, that hides the detail of the actual reading of the file and parsing. Um, yeah, we could we could do that. I think it's a, it's a worthwhile investment. So this will be the last thing we do. So something like um, context resolver. 
it really sounds much smarter than what it does, right? Uh, so, something like this, and the interface will have just resolve context path. Uh, let's use an FS2 path, and we'll return uh, a build. Okay, maybe let's just call it a build reader. We'll have a read. Um, yeah, that's, that's a little better. And now build reader, all the boring stuff. So dev apply, yeah, using F instance. And this will be implemented using uh, files and uh, compiler, uh, an FS2 compiler. So this, and this will be a build reader of F. And we'll basically copy paste this that will allow us to uh, to test this using like a fake instance of a, a build reader, which I think is really nice. Mm, and I think we can define this as a single uh, single uh, abstract method interface. So context uh, just like that, except this is already an FS2 path, and we need a cut syntax as well as a monad. Uh, one throw. There we go. And now I can replace most of these things. Uh, I will just need the reader and an applicative for the pure call. And this can now be uh, just build reader f read uh, path from an IO path uh, context. Right, so you probably see like how I can test this, uh, implement a build reader that just hard codes the outputs based on based on a specific specific path, uh, and just work with that without actually touching the file system. We might even be able to just get rid of CLI command completely, just pass a fake build reader to the to this if it was to, to you know to work with files like this could be F. This could be def, uh, something like this, build reader. And you can probably see the rest. Like we just pass a fact instance of this and we get the whole the whole command after decoding the build. Uh, but we don't have to do that. And certainly we don't have to do that today. And we definitely don't have time for that today. So we're not gonna. And now I still need to define this instance. I'm gonna do it just here. So given um, build reader, io. And it's going to be just a default instance. Mm, and yeah, that, that seems to be it. Uh, also, we should be able to remove some imports again and also this compiler here. Mm, I think that's nice. Uh, Monad throw, probably. And files. I think that's it. Okay, yeah, let's leave it at that. Uh, so yeah, build reader is another new thing here. Uh, at some point, yeah, I think this should be just a build uh, file. So it's not gonna be a context uh, because I want to allow like specifying a concrete file just like Docker does. So this will just be done somewhere else, possibly with a different, yeah, with a specific name parameter. I think in, in the end, it will be useful to have that outside. So what I mean by that is, uh, we'll do this in here. So for example, if build, right now it works like uh, Steve build, something like that. Uh, yeah, like that. But potentially you might want to do Steve build, like context. Uh, like this, like context, and then like F Steve file, JSON. Um, it should allow you to like change the whole context, but also use this, this name inside the context. 
Uh, I think that's how it's supposed to work with Docker. I would need to confirm. But basically, if you just said uh, context uh, like this, like these are kind of coupled. Anyway, uh, let's just keep it like this. Um, so yeah, define build reader. Right. Uh, so yeah, I think this is this is what I wanted to do today. Like all I have time for anyway. Uh, so these are the things that we did today. Um, actually, let's look at using this. So we, of course, we went through all the discuss steward changes. Uh, we merged all these updates. It's, it's not a very pretty uh, merge tree, but yeah, that's that's all I can afford <laughs> in in my Git. I don't really know why it looks like this. It's a very strange sequence of merges. Uh, anyway, we refactored our code to use enums more in the command model, uh, and yeah, in, in the whole command model and the build model, uh, because we can. Uh, we added a command line interface using the client, uh, so I hope that was instructive as well. Uh, we added this intermediate step in which we kind of did the parsing of the command line uh, arguments first into a single data type and then convert to our command that we have uh, as, a, as an existing type. Uh, so we have some sort of separation of these two models right now and frontend doesn't, doesn't depend on the shared model of the command. Uh, they are sort of more independent now. Uh, then we actually added this, this module for the front end uh, so that uh, that lives in a separate file. Uh, then we added the test for that. And finally, we defined this build reader interface um, to encapsulate this whole process of reading this file, or at least reading a file and parsing it into a build, uh, because that's, that's effectively what it is. Um, yeah, in the next episodes, uh, I think I want to focus on uh, like the pretty output of, of the client, uh, maybe E2E tests of the whole setup, uh, like actual E2E tests. Uh, all of these are like nice to have, but maybe not requirements, things that we actually need. Uh, so we definitely need pretty output. What else? Maybe some more commands. Uh, commands, tagging images, uh, custom build file format. So we might build a parser that deals with this sort of uh, Steve file, right? So what I meant before, absurd, hello world. Maybe we can actually try to start parsing this kind of files. Uh, this shouldn't be too difficult. There are libraries that will help us. Uh, we don't even need to use libraries for that, but I think uh, it's a a good place to learn with libraries, like using libraries. Parsing conceptually uh, is, I think, something that you learn in other ways of education. In here, we could learn to use uh, Scala, functional Scala uh, libraries uh, to do that. So I think, yeah, that might actually be the next thing, like one of the next things. Uh, I think it would be nice to, nice to have. Mm, what else? Yeah, I think that's, that's good enough. So. Uh, this, I think, is like a must-have, this uh, pretty streamed. That would be a really nice thing to have and possibly a must-have, but everything else is sort of, well, maybe not this. Uh, all of this is kind of, what else can we do? But maybe we will not have time to do that. Uh, we'll see. These might also be like many episodes, like for example, um, this is a possible good episode, like even outside the series, just migrating from uh, from Unit to Weaver uh, as a uh, documentary of sorts on how, how to do that, how I do that here. We'll see. Uh, yeah, in any case, uh, this is the whole video. So let me know what you think about it. Uh, let me know what you think of the lighting and the sound. Uh, let me know if you are following this and if you have a repository, I would love, love to list it. Uh, in here in the community implementations section and uh, yeah this is all i have for today uh, thanks again for watching uh, i know these videos are very long and i really appreciate every single person who walks through all of that you're greatly appreciated and i hope you'll stick to the end uh, which should be coming in the foreseeable future so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode uh, have fun <laughs>